you tucked in, eh? Eh? What's the matter? What's wrong? You're scared? Not monsters again, is it? I told you, monsters aren't real. They're not real. There's no such thing as monsters. I mean, the real monsters are people. Us. Human beings. You could be a monster. You're not, though. I could be a monster. But anyway, you're afraid of the dark, you're afraid of monsters. The good thing about the dark is you can't see in the dark, so the killers can't see in the dark. So you're, you're fine. Unless they've got night vision goggles, like that film we watched. Uh, that one uh, where he had the woman in the, in the well. Remember Buffalo Bill? You remember that one? Yeah? Anyway, what you want to do, lovely, is forget about the monsters. Embrace the darkness. Uh, remember how I told you about how many poisonous snakes there are in the world? Well, there are people that drink a little bit of venom from these many millions of poisonous snakes that could be literally anywhere. Under the bed. <laughs> no, they're not. There are the, these people that drink little bits of venom every day so that when they get bitten by these snakes, they won't get as sick. Which is what you want to do with the dark, love. With the dark, each night, take it in a little bit at a time and then more and more you will get acclimatised to it because eventually, at the end, it's all darkness. Uh, at the very end, it's just blackness forever and ever. All right? Daddy has to go make a monster now, all right? It's not a real one, because they're not real, are they? What, what are monsters? Humans, us, we're the monsters. The things we do. Um, not me, specifically, uh, but other people. I think there's been some in this area. But you don't have to worry about that, because I think they're in prison. Anyway, I love you. I love you. Night. Have a good night. Mwah! Hey, it's your boy Dan, your 40 year old boy, with a new video. We're going to start this video with a plastic uh, sweet egg thing from my shop. It's Peppa Pig themed. Just rip off Peppa's face there. Inside is a rubber shaped like Daddy Pig. Don't remember his voice, it's been such a while. Chop his head off. And uh, not only is there a rubber, but there is a tub of what I assume is pig shit. Little tub of pig shit for the kids. I have two of these eggs. I've killed two uh, members of Peppa Pig's family by now. Uh, and this here is a Makey robot from Maker's Fair. You might recognize this thing. Um, I'm gonna place it underneath one of these eggs. Now, you're gonna tell me which egg is under by the end of this magic trick it's a magic trick i'm gonna move these eggs super fast watch them go back and forth round and round and i bet you you don't know which egg is under left or right i see a lot of people shouting left out there let's have a look since you're all so smart i'm gonna spend this episode coloring in unicorns dag nam it not really, uh, this just happened to be the right height for me to mark this egg. Now it's time to get out this terrifying rotary tool and cut this egg. <coughs> Easy peasy. Uh, I've given this thing a nice sand all over because it's horrible plastic and uh, smooth the edge there that I cut. Now, this is a stack of wooden discs. What I'm making with this egg is a turbine or like a jet engine type thing. So I'm, I'm kind of winging it here. I didn't really know how to do the inside of this thing, but I want this thing to look realistic. Uh, and everybody knows that jet turbines are predominantly made of wood. I've glued several of these discs together and I'm marking now the pen uh, for where the propeller blades are going to go. 
quite methodical this bit quite enjoy this being methodical I would have been a great serial killer I mean you should just check my diaries from when I was a teen the writing is tiny and all over the place speaking of which here is the handyman's murder weapon I'm gonna use this to carve some notches on those lines that I've marked on the uh, the wooden discs I then realized they're not notched enough so I use the granddad saw and these notches are for the propeller blades that I'm going to make out of some styrene a, sty a big old styrene sheet mark a strip with a pen and then take out the good old art shiv breaking out all the classics today and uh, cut that strip and then divide that strip into eight equal lengths ready to be attached to the wooden uh, middle of the propeller what's that called the, the bit in the middle of the propeller who cares Once all the blades are attached and you've inserted a rod, the turbine, if done correctly, should work. Like so. This is a big old sprue of uh, random pieces. I think they're tank pieces that was given to me in a gift box of sprues and other such things from a lovely patron. You know who you are, thank you very much. I'm gonna use these little round bits here to put on the end of the turbines and then add two semi-spherical beads to the end just to finish it off. Oh, and I made two of them. This is the other half of the egg from earlier. I'm going to cut some of this off and uh, use this as well. As well as this strange conical shaped wooden bead that I found in a charity shop in a bag. Uh, and I'm going to cut this thing in half using uh, my ninja skills. And attach each half to the underside of each blade. Uh, a lot of this stuff you're not going to see, so I don't really know why I'm bothering. Uh, but it just felt better in my soul. So with the other piece of egg that I'd uh, chopped up into a couple of loops, I'm going to take a little popsicle stick, tiny popsicle stick, a popsicle stick for pixies. And um, we call them lollipop sticks. I've not been that Americanized. I'm going to attach it to this plastic thing and then attach the turbiney bit to the plastic thing and the popsicle stick. I mean, you can see what's going on right there. Next, in my palm, I have a, uh, a selection of junk, some washers and uh, a plastic tube that was inside of a seat roll. Using all of these to make some kind of rod thing with a weird gear, plasticky thing from the sprue that you saw earlier at the top. Uh, to complete this jet engine once the other bit of egg is slotted on. Ooh, that looks nice. By the way, I've forgotten to tell you what this is, what, what I'm doing. No doubt you would have seen the thumbnail, but uh, what I'm actually making is a uh, mutated cyborg slug. Obviously. I needed something for the body of this mutant cyborg thing. So I went to the pound shop and I found this bubble blaster. Now when you buy things like this, and you have six-year-old daughters or sons, as you can't let them see it because if they see anything that looks like this they expect it to be theirs the entitled little shits after dismantling the gun there's lots of great little bits in there that can be used later on uh, time to get out the rotary saw again oh how I love this part here is the bare bones the uh, Mechanical torso of the cyborg mutant kaiju. MCK, that's what they're called now. The MC mutant cyborg kaijus. I have done one of these already. If you, uh, are, if I remember, I'll put it up in the corner here. But otherwise, it's the it's the bluey thing with the the green tentacles. You'll see it later on. Anyway, this is the the body of it, and I'm covering it with panels made from EVA foam. Now I've stuck these panels all over. I, I have a plan for this uh, MCK, wink, uh, but it's in my head. 
So I'm kind of winging it, half winging it, half trying to bring my imagination to fruition. As pretentious as that sounds. Anyway, this thing's covered in panels now. And it's time to uh, attach the the jet engines to this thing with these tweezers that I got from work. They were in a box used to pick up giant cola bottle sweets. This is some paper coated wire. I don't know where I got this from. You can use anything, any kind of plastic coated wire. I'm using this to attach the tweezer struts to the, uh, the main body and to the engine. It's all very much uh, self-explanatory through your eyeballs. So I've got a bit of a, <coughs> bit of a cough. Uh, more works have been going on in the house. Uh, it's very dusty. And it's actually quite difficult to re record voiceover. I'll give you an example of why. Yep, those builders have selfishly been knocking down the walls that we requested be knocked down. Um, but this here, none of us wrote this. This was hidden under a false ceiling. And I'm not even joking, this isn't part of a Halloween gag. This was actually written on the wall. Have you seen Ghost yet? I'm not sure if they're referring to the film because of the poor grammar or an actual ghost. Whoever wrote this in Byro years ago. Here is the thing with the, the two jets attached and uh, I've got to say I'm pretty happy with this. This is pretty much how I envisioned it in my mind's sketchbook. Uh, this is the, the, the basic structure. Now it's time to add some details, which is the fun part. Starting with a bit of an inside uh, of a, a receipt roll, another one. There's different size receipt rolls. This is a black tube. Uh, not as good as the white ones, uh, but I'm gonna chop a bit of this and I'm gonna use this to make a vent using some other pieces from the, uh, from the sprue earlier on. And uh, this plaster is tape as uh, the grid or the grill, whatever it is. Vacuum sealed all nice and tight there. Two of these, one on each side. There's something to be said uh, about symmetry. Symmetry apparently is the key to beauty. So if your face is not symmetrical on both sides, you are ugly, which apparently appears to be my case. Uh, I did, once upon a time, try uh, dating videos uh, under the pseudonym of Jim Burry. To say I was nervous was an understatement. single bite. I will never see that £2,000 again. It was an absolute con, I told you. Again with the white styrene card, gonna attach this in some places. Uh, I believe that my finger will point out all of the places I placed this styrene. Uh, too many to film, or I just didn't bother. But you can see where well, I've done it right now. Look, you're looking at the thing rotating. Really should get this thing oiled. This is a huge rack of half spherical beads. Uh, I shall be using the smallest of said beads to rivet the shit out of this thing. Using the archive, stabbing the rivet sphered thing, then dipping it in soup glue, and then rivet away.
Yeah, you think that's a lot of rivets? You want to check this out? Looks like a bloody pearly king of London. Or queen. Uh, we have pearly kings and queens. Do you think pearly kings and queens are disappointed if their children don't decide to be pearly kings or queens when they grow up? Like if they go out in just normal clothes? Are they ashamed? Breaking out some plastic coated paper clips. I'm going to use these to make some little bendy bar bits, little pokey out hooky bits. Uh, just, just little bits. Just bits. That's all this is. Bits. This entire video is just bits on bits. Hot bits on bits action. Now I believe we're coming to the end of the tarting up section. Uh, tarting is a British phrase meaning to dress oneself up to to elevate one above one's standing. You're not proud of where you come from, you're ashamed. Just like the pearly king and queen when their son or daughter goes out in a dress. Where's your depose? Next, adding some wires. With the wires attached, that is pretty much done, ready for a prime. Although there is something missing. Now, I don't want to enrage all the pearly kings and queens out there, but I will ask, what is the point of you? What is the point? How do you earn a living? Do you sell pearls? Because you just seem to accumulate them. And when I looked at one of you recently, it wasn't even pearls, it was like little bits of tissue. There I go. I've said it. Oh, and I've added a dorsal fin. After a quick Google, I'd just like to retract the last rant. Apparently, uh, pearly kings and queens raise money for charity, so uh, I do apologise. You look great. I think you look great. Uh, doesn't this look nice now it's primed? <clears throat> this is the painting stage, so uh, burnt sienna and then a, an overbrush of, of gun metal. Uh, standard form. God, I feel bad about the pearly kings and queens. Still, I've decided to paint this thing lime green for a bit of vibrancy. Uh, patchy paintwork uh, to make it look like chipped paint. Look, I just want to stress it again. I'm sorry, you old pearlies. I'm sorry. You just get on my nerves. Uh, it's, that's my problem, not yours. You should be able to wear what you want. Why aren't there of any young pearlies? Forget about the pearlies, Dan. This next bit is a technique that I've taken up in the last few months because it looks better. Painting the uh, chips with a darker line and a lighter line to make them look 3D. It's uh, cheaper than making them actually 3D. Little sneaky crafting trick there. Cut. That tiny pop and the old man moan you heard just then was me bursting the yellow paint all over the palette there. Uh, if your paint isn't coming out of the tube, do not squeeze it. Uh, use a pin or something to pierce the hole. Something I've learned, and um, yet yeah, I still do it. Uh, to be honest, nothing good ever comes out of squeezing anything, really. But then if you can think of something, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm making a stencil, you know the caution lines, black and yellow things, just down the sides there, using a bit of a masking tape, and uh, it came out all right. Trying to add a bit more colour to this thing. Much like Polly, my last month, so I'm going for more of an 80s action figure aesthetic. But slightly more horror, I suppose. More masking tape here, gonna do a little triangle on each of the jet engines. Don't know why. For a bit of visual interest, I suppose. And also using a, a cream paint, an off-white paint, I painted little swirlies on the propeller blade thing there. That looks good, I like that. Happy with that. Now at the minute all these colours are butting heads, so to speak. But we need them to be married together. And to do that we need washes. So I'm going to start with an uh, an oil wash here. Four pint. Oh, that would be high. Four parts white spirit, one part black oil paint, I believe is the best ratio for me. You might choose something different, but I mean this came out pretty well. For once I wasn't panicked. After a night of drying, I will take the makeup sponge to it. Very satisfying, just rubbing the very tippity top surfaces off. And then when it's fully dry, uh, that's when I add my washes, like uh, this rust wash, for example. Uh, and once that's done, that's all the painting done for the mechanical part of this creation. 
but I'm going to take a quick moment to thank the patrons for returning with the sculpting part of this project. This is what I like to call sculpting, scratch building and sculpting all in one place. It's not like it's a wholly original concept, just as nobody, I'm 80% sure nobody's ever called it sculpting before. Hello everybody, I'm just going to quickly thank everybody for your continued support. We're going to start with the top tier there, the uh, the Do Better's tier with Gemma Ingram, Ben Deckard, Benedict Miller, Country Fried Minis, Dave Birdsall, Demon Mittenhands, Ed Trotz, Julian Soto, Miranda Stone, Rich Evans, Rico Shear, Smokey, Tony Ellison, Zoltan. And also a great big welcome to our brand new patrons here, Sayanchi, Alan Blake, Sarah Jameson, Captain Grossbeard, Jasnan, RJ Bailey, Andrew Fern and Bobby Dazzler. Thank you very much. A big thank you to all of you and a big thank you to my uh, second tier, the do-gooders tier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And a big thank you to my doers tier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it is October. Uh, I will have a lovely Halloween episode for you. And for the patrons, I will have an extra special a Halloween episode just for you lot. I will be staying overnight on my own in a place that is uh, famously haunted by someone whose name is the same as somebody's genitalia. Uh, that will make sense to you when you get the video. Thank you very much. If you'd like to join the Patreon, the link is below. Thanks, on with the video. Uh, for the first time ever, I'm gonna sculpt this creature exclusively with uh, translucent white clay. I've never done this before. This is an experiment, so wish me luck. And for that, I need a big old block, like this big old block of Cernit Translucent White. That's how you know it's fresh. Breaking out the, uh, the nice thick armature wire for this one. Been holding on to this for a while. I don't know why I'm hesitant to use things, but then what's the point, eh? Use it or lose it. That's what they say. It's not strictly true, is it? Money? That's just one example. Once I've got the shape, I'm going to wrap it in uh, tin foil or alum aluminum foil to you Americans and get this kind of uh, poop shape, I suppose. It's tapered at one end. And then cover that in some bacon bond. Bake and bond. And uh, then co start covering that with some uh, translucent clay. And we're, we're, we're off and we're rolling. Any uh, tryptophobia sufferers out there, I'm sorry. This is a uh, texture tool that I made out of clay. Just took a little ball of clay, poked loads of little holes in it, baked it, stuck it to the end of a paintbrush stick. This contraption is a very cheap air fryer that I use exclusively for clay. It was about 30 pounds or something. Uh, and it's perfect for baking clay. Quicker, easier, and you can keep it on your shelf under your bed, in your wardrobe. I mean, it's up to you. At the minute, this is looking a bit like a goat penis or something, you know, the kind of thing they'd feed the uh, I'm a celebrity contestants. But show me something that isn't phallic or yonic. I dare you. Uh, next, I'm doing the uh, incredibly yonic face. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me. And after realizing this, I spend the next uh, few steps trying to make it look less like a private part uh, by adding these little uh, mouthpieces, looking a bit like Predator actually, thinking about it. I've given this thing a kind of floppy goiter looking thing under its chin. It doesn't have a chin, but you know what I mean. And uh, given it some lips around the, uh, around the gums. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but once all that's done, time to give this thing some eyes. So I'm going to use these tiny little cabochons. And once they've settled down, I'm going to paint the underside of them black. And with these painted cabochons, I'm going to press them into two little stumps uh, that are the eye sockets uh, and then give it a quick bake. And with that, the face is pretty much done. Time to give it some color. Now, the reason I sculpted this entire thing with translucent clay is because I want to try out some uh, speed paints on translucent clay to see how that looks. So we're going to start with some hardened leather. Mm -hmm. 
Now I have to say, it came out pretty bloody good. This is pretty much the effect I was going for. This isn't the end result, but this is uh, pretty good as is. Uh, so I'm going to take a bit of uh, one of the pinky colours, don't remember what it's called, and paint the gums. And also with these uh, speed paints is they reactivate with water. I know a lot of people complained about that, so they released some that don't. Uh, but I like that because it's great for blending. So with the, the tips of this creature are uh, painted yellow and then dabbed away some of the yellow and it's given a nice effect. The creature was looking a little too cute, so I've given it some uh, big old fangs there, also made with the translucent clay. Uh, stuck them into the gums, giving them a little bit of a brown wash. And uh, off camera I've made a tiny little aerial hat to, to stick on its head there. I'd already made uh, an indent for it to fit into. Uh, did that secretly. Now this was a tough call because it's already looking quite shiny but I wanted it to be extra special slimy. So uh, using some UV resin I'm covering the whole thing apart from the ends of the teeth and the inside of the mouth there because that mouth needs to look like a deep hole. Ooh. And just look at how translucent that thing is held up to the light. Very happy with this. Sorry, I'm sounding a little boastful, but I just want you to be proud of me. Be proud of me, Mama. This is the moment I've been looking forward to, uh, adding the sculpted element to the scratch built element there, just slotting that in. It needs to be a strong fit, so I'm using some epoxy glue here, two part epoxy glue stuff. Five minute epoxy, I'm not, it takes longer than five minutes, believe me. And once that's in, give it a nice EVA foam collar to blend it in more so. And uh, look at that, loving it. Now the more suit of you may have noticed the hollow in its neck there, which I, uh, I, I made while sculpting ready to attach a piece of conduit wire from the neck to the, uh, the torso, so to speak. Uh, and to do that I'm going to use some conduit wire, funnily enough. But I'm going to use some rigid steel wire inside the conduit wire so it holds its shape. Now this condu conduit wire was part of that gift box that was sent to me. Thank you very much. You know who you are. I won't pretend that it was easy getting it to the exact shape it needed to be, but it's possible. That's all I can tell you. Now once that conduit wire is attached, does that just not scream 80s action figure to you? 80s, 90s action figure. Main, probably more 90s. But conduit wire, just uh, that's the uh, the cherry on top. Uh, it's time to do some lovely little details. I'm trying something out because I want this thing to be slimy. And I want slime to be dripping from its mouth, from its maw. And uh, to do that, I'm using some super strong invisible fishing line. Now, I've seen people use Yuhu glue, stringing it between teeth and stuff. It looks good for the, uh, for the camera, but it does not last. I'm all about permanence, me. Just ask all my exes. Uh, but this definitely does last. Using a bit of fishing line and then UV resin to attach the fishing line and then uh, drips of UV resin cured pretty much as soon as they're put on. This thing will stay there. It will not come off. Not unless you, you force it off. I mean, using brute force, yes, it will come off. But otherwise, it will stay there. Not like this sneaky Yoo-Hoo glue trick. Trust me. The second those glamour shots are done, that glue is snapping or falling off. That slobber is there to stay, baby. Trust me. See, look, I even knock it with my finger there and all it does is flex a little. Believe me, I've flexed this stuff plenty of times. Uh, almost like a fidget toy. I've built the head, now I need to build the butt, so some more uh, wire here. Gonna do the same thing I did earlier, the same process as tin foil, aluminum foil, clay, and just build it up. Um, you guys like lore, I don't have any lore for this guy yet. Uh, I will have lore for all of these MCKs, as they're now called, eventually, but let, let me get it together in my head. Uh, uh, this guy, it's called Slug, and uh, he is living on some lettuce, some genetically modified bloody pesticide infested lettuce, uh, and uh, he was in this guy's sandwich, but this guy works at a drone factory, 
a highly uh, technologically advanced drone factory. They were working on some experimental stuff uh, like uh, mutants, maybe mutated drones. They were, they, they, hey, he got mutated, fell into a drone machine, come out looking like this. This isn't law, not yet. This isn't, we're not gonna stick with this. Just give me some time to think, all right? Jeez. Now, while I was rambling on the email, I noticed I made some uh, spiky TP things for the end of this towel. Uh, I do have lots of spares, so I will be feeding those to Mola, the, the tooth god, just as soon as somebody sorts their attitude out. Well, that's it, mister. Straight to bed. You have to be firm, and when you say something, you stick to it. Unlike uh, my lovely Beth, who gave me this lovely little heart poppet, uh, which is great for a palette. Love you, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Now, the great thing about these poppets uh, as palettes is that the little poppet bits are silicone, so they're, uh, you can just pop the paint out once it's dry. Also, they're a good size, so you don't put too much paint in. And it's shaped like a heart. All this talk of heart-shaped palettes, the, uh, the model is pretty much finished. Uh, a few little details to do, but I'm gonna use this giant uh, cocktail stirring stick to attach it to. Give it the illusion of flight, because it is a flying creature. Now the base is a wooden coaster that I bought from the Amazons. And I'm gonna give it a deserty theme. Uh, sand, but first I need some rocks built up, so I'm going to use some uh, XPS foam chunks. With those all rounded off at the edges and stuck down with some wood glue overnight, because it takes a while for these to stick with glue, but it's a good strong fix. I'm going to use some uh, Vallejo earth texture to fill in the gaps and just cover the whole thing pretty much. And uh, while before that is dry, I will add some uh, sand and small stones for texture. And then give it a nice coat of brown paint, just to bring it all together. Once the brown paint's dry, a dry brush of some lighter browns and greys. Uh, you know the drill. And then putting down a layer of glue. Wood glue again, I believe. I always use wood glue, never PVA. I think it's the same thing. Uh, add some sand and then the usual isopropyl alcohol mixed with some watery glue just to fix it in there nice and firm. Then got a little selection of dead grasses here, grass tufts to add to the, uh, to the base. I feel like I'm teaching you how to suck eggs here. Uh, I feel like you all know this. That's a strange phrase because I don't think a lot of you know how to suck eggs. Honestly, I don't want to offend you, but I believe sucking eggs is blowing, is actually blowing eggs. Is that right? I mean, I don't know. Teach me how to suck eggs. Now I have these new things, uh, these planty looking things, dead looking plants from the Amazons. And uh, I thought I'd give them a go, just a few strands here and there. And they look all right. I'm happy with them. And with that base done, it's time to paint the edge with some black 3.0. Uh, and then we can call this pretty good. That's the phrase, I think. Uh, that's it, the slug is finished. Uh, I've added a few more slimy bits with the fishing line and UV resin, but you'll see those in the showcase at the end. As we slowly zoom out here, you can see the other MCK, which is Polly, the parrot mutated cyborgy thing. Now, I think these two look great together. Like they're about to have a fight. A proper scrap. Now, I really enjoyed making this guy. Uh, and if you'd like to see more MCKs, I'm just going to keep chucking that at you. Then uh, do let me know in the comments because I'm more than happy to do so. I've got plenty of ideas. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Hang around for the showcase that's coming up in a second. If you'd like to help support this channel, then there is a link to the patron in the info. Uh, I'm very grateful to all of my patrons. Thank you for your patience. And for the monies that you send me every month, which always astounds me uh, and thankfully feeds me. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you have a good day. See you real soon for a Halloween special. And uh, like and subscribe.